Yeah, happy Sabbath again. <laughs> yeah, today because it's a family program, uh, uh, Brother Sami and uh, Sister Lena said we need to say some experience. Uh, I don't know. I think the last time when I was preaching, I had the ex experience how I met, how we met uh, together, we, we challenge what we went through, and if no one didn't um, haven't been here and wants to hear it, you can you can see on YouTube. It's calling uh, this is my story, uh, and uh, and you can see how we went through. And today I would like to the experience today is about our wedding. Yeah, our wedding. And I'd like us to not need to move forward. This is one of the pictures of our wedding. We had a Bible from the flowers. Yeah. This one. No, no, not like this. Ale, go and help him, not not. Please. Okay. Ale. He was in seven days in this uh, London Romanian church, the uh, Wilson, the uh, uh, Arsden, Arsden, yeah, Arsden church. Yeah. Yeah, and this is uh, in uh, Regent's Park after the, the wedding. Yeah. <laughs> is that you? No, it's, uh, I was a bit... Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just uh, used the AI program. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I would like to ask you, how much do you think you need to spend today to do a wedding? Yeah. Or how do you think how much money we spend to do our wedding? Just quest the figure, come on. 20k. Huh? 20k, okay. okay. Alright, yeah. Any other figures? Well, okay. looks like this everything is about the 10. Uh, can you do a this kind of wedding with 500 pounds? Huh? <laughs> yes. Uh, basically, the experience started like that. Uh, when Mariana was uh, was back home and I was uh, I was in UK, uh, it, it was a process where she was looking to make some paperwork and to, to, to come in UK. Plus, uh, the, the events happened as well. She was went to a hospital, some having several problems. Which I suppose to support her financially because everything is paid over there. And just before she arrived, I was out of work for three months, and and I had about five thousand pounds in my savings and like that. And when we was looking to do the wedding, we had only five hundred pounds in the bank account. Yeah. And this is how we we start our wedding. And. I know probably other people said, oh yeah, but we could wait, we can plan, but we set up, we want to, as soon as you come in, we will have a wedding. And I know it was a panic, it was, uh, uh, it was kind of what we're doing, uh, but uh, I was confident God will help us. And I said, we will pray, we will pray and God will give us the light. Uh, and I want to say to you, in the day of a wedding, yeah, you see Mariana is on a, on a, on a wedding dress, and I am in a wedding suit. I, we don't have it. We didn't bow it. Uh, basically, a year before, it was a couple we, which had it, yeah, which I bow it. It was only the, or, the, the rose thing. This is what I, I bow it. Uh, but the rest of it, it was given for free, yeah. Um, the church, what we utilized, it was, I don't know if, if Nati can go back, yeah? Yeah, you go, like it's going normal, back and forth, or, yeah, or press the button. Or press, press on the picture, when we are in the church. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, next one. Yeah, basically this is how we came inside of the church. Uh, the preparation of the flowers as well. It, 
we have the system who help us. Um, yeah, basically this is a church where we was renting. And uh, I know it was done on a Sabbath day. I know it's not, we, it's not often to do a Sabbath day uh, uh, weddings. But I want to say to you, who wants to do Sabbath day, don't do it. <laughs> it's uh, hard. You need to prepare everything and by Friday evening and after it's after Sabbath you need to go and do it's, it's, it's much things. Probably it's better was if it was on Sunday, but because to avoid we didn't have money to pay a venue. Yeah. And uh, we used our own church, which we was hired at that time. And uh, and after we we had a kind of fellowship lunch. Yeah. Uh, when uh, when the day has been started, uh, basically uh, before before we starting uh, to 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 uh, do the wedding, a um, few weeks before basically, uh, we done announce if are people who are willing to come and help us. Uh, by the it was I was looking to pay money for products and somebody to help us to put. And in the end, people said, no, we don't want any money. We we'll just give you all food. No, you're coming to your uh, <coughs> own food, something like that. <laughs> but I want to say to you, like, uh, is probably when, when I look now, probably somebody could spend about 10,000 pounds to get a wedding here with all of these things. But I saw when, when we started engaging people from the church and I said, I want to be helped. Uh, my mother and uh, my, my, my mother was passed away. My father could not come. My mother and father-in-law could not come. We didn't have any support. It was only me and Mariana, yeah, and looking to marry. Uh, we had only one trust: it was God who will help us. And God has been used to lies our brothers and sisters' heart to do it. And I said to you, what I started to do the wedding was five hundred pounds. <coughs> this is the money. I don't think the only way you are crazy to do a wedding today with 500 pounds. But what do you think is impossible with God is possible. And this is why uh, whenever you want to do it, whatever you want to do, first you need to put God. And this is why we always from the very beginning of our relation, we put God to be connected to our family. And I think what Anna wants to say as well, because I'm talking too much. Yeah, uh, for me, uh, when I came in this country, I was baptized first. Uh, I started learning the word of the phone uh, when I was in the hospital. Yes, um, yeah, I started learning about it. I found the Bible. When I, when I came here, I was baptized. After that, for me, it was a shock. How people can come to help me without knowing me? Yeah, I came from Orthodox Church. But uh, we left in God's hands everything and pray for Yeah, He make a beautiful, beautiful wedding. And we praise God for the brothers who help and uh, make make their best. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, my uh, my advice is probably today if probably I could do a different type of wedding. Because I cannot say I'm not in financial difficulty. Uh, not so much. <laughs> Always you are. Uh, but I want to say to you, you need to have trust in God. Yes. Yeah. I know a lot of marriages started. They have a nice fancy mm -hmm. weddings. And after a few years, they divorce. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because they didn't involve God in their marriage. Mm -hmm. A happy marriage is when God is in charge of your marriage. I don't want to say everything is rose in our family, because everything was rose, yeah, you see? <laughs> White and rose, the ideal family. But with God, you can go forward. Uh, he will learn, train you. He will uh, teach you how to step forward. Uh, I wish to be again at my 20s. Yeah? And, uh, uh, and uh, yeah. I don't think I can get back into that suit, <laughs> even if it's for free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is our experience about uh, God, how He worked from the very beginning in our marriage, and He put our first step in our marriage, and He helped us, 
you show us uh, because I want to say to you, I was waiting from the government from tax return 2,500 pounds. I was waiting from April when I applied, and the money came in September after the wedding. Uh, and the money, my my uh, my money from the saving, which has gone to help Mariana and plus sustain myself without being out of work, has been shown me it's not about the money. It's not about the money. It's about God itself who, who will conduct, who will, who will prepare everything. And yeah, Mariana said, I was shocked as well, because when I saw brothers and sisters, how they're involved, they, even they coming in a Friday evening uh, before sunset and, and, uh, uh, and arrange the balloons. Because I was looking today uh, some pictures about the venue where we had the food as well. The amount of food what we had, the, the decoration of, on on a, on a, on a lunch venue as well, which was being done, it was amazing. And we never told them I want like this or I want like that. I let them to organize it. How they thinking is good for us. And this is when you leave God to control your life. Thank you. And uh, at the end, we are very blessed with four children. Praise mm -hmm. God. And that's why. You wish to be a uh, 20, but not now. You are moving to next step for children. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank you to Khan family for your testimony. <coughs> and uh, good, uh, is it afternoon already? Yeah? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Folkestone Church, or Folkestone family, and today we are here to discuss family matters. Like uh, they say, you, you wash your dirty clothes in your family. Yeah. Or we can also discuss why family matters. So. Um, I, I told Arthur before we before we came in. I said um, I've forgotten everything I was supposed to say, um, and uh, no matter how hard I try listening to their testimony, it's all gone. So um, I'm going to let you do the sermon. <laughs> um, so my first question for you is. Uh, who invented the family? God. When? In the beginning. When the family was first family. Okay, and what, um, as, um, as um, Alec read, what did he say to them? Be fruitful and multiply. And increase in number. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Arthur has taken that very seriously. <laughs> I stop, <but. laughs> and we have we have another uh, a common friend. He's taking it even more seriously than Arthur. Yeah, and um, the next question would be: Why is the family so important? What makes this? What makes the family to be important? The, the, the family is represented with God because it said, Let's make a man our, our image. And the family is a total how God it is. And this is what is representing very well the family because you can see, uh, like, uh, men, women, and children. This is kind of unity of, of, of the family, the result of the family. So, because so family is important. Because it, because it represents God. Yeah. Why else? You, no one? No one wants to say? Well, uh, the family is very important. And we discover <coughs> the Bible, which is the word of God, uh, speak to us and to follow, start with the Ten Commandments, to have the best education. Once we have this diverse education from the commandments, all over the world will be peace, respect, and love, like in heaven. 
but I discovered it more than half of the population for all over the world when they live in there. And I said to most of them, the first proof that this what is the air which is breathing. If you not have air, we we'll die. And uh, they continue to come to different very bad uh, uh, information. And I said, please try to discover the, the best light uh, in life for everyone is the Bible. Once we will read correctly the Bible, we will discover the best of life start with the Ten Commandments. Uh, what to discuss? Mm -hmm. Yes, sister. Mm -hmm. It's a blessing. Yeah, it's a blessing. For who? We are blessed today. It's a blessing from God. Okay. We are blessed today with the family, and the, the, the same belief, and the same we are the family. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a family. Family is a family. is a, is the nest. Because every time, and, and I, uh, um, I am very tempted to start with testimonies <laughs> from my own life, but I won't do it, uh, or at least not yet. Uh, so for me, personally, right, uh, family is where you get back and you, and you, you, you run around all day, and then you get back and then you breathe. It's the nest. Where you, where you recharge, where you find rest. Sometimes you find trouble as well. Yeah, but uh, that's how it is. Yeah, and family is the place where the next generation is being formed. So the family is the breeding or the developing ground of our children. Um, how, how was the family structured if we look, if, so there, I've been, I've been like um, trying to find um, descriptions and whatnot uh, in the Bible uh, to get an idea of um, how family was structured in the house of Israel. Right, so um, there is not a, a, a single or like a, a, a passage that says, "Oh, they were that, 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 and that." So you've got to read a fair bit to to get an idea of um, how the family works. So uh, in the beginning, uh, Israel were nomads, right? They were nomads. They lived in a tent and they followed their herds, the sheep. The cattle, what they had, they would follow them around. <coughs> so, in their case, the family was not mom, dad, boy, girl, and a dog. That was not the family. The family was patriarch, the eldest man of the family, his wives, one, two, three, maybe four, five. Then the servants, their children, his children. That was the whole the whole family. It was it did not it was not limited to what, how we see it today. And in many in many cultures and even in the in the from the culture I come from, um, families. Um, when you, when you are talking about your family, or if someone else is talking about your family, they will automatically be including yourself, your father, your grandfather, your uncle, your aunt, and you know, it's not like, oh, it's just this, and uh, for instance, I've, uh, I don't know if I, if I said this um, here before, <laughs> but um, I lived in a village, and many people from the village, uh, the young ones, like my, my parents' uh, generation, they would work in the city and live in the city. And in, in, um, in holidays, during holidays, they would bring the kids to the countryside to stay with their grandparents. 
Because there was no way you could get out of the country during communism, for instance, to go on holidays. Where would you go? Holiday was a... So anyway, they would bring the children to live in the countryside during the holidays. And obviously not everyone in the village would know the children. So if you say you would you were running around on the street and you would um, you would meet someone, uh, you had to greet him. It was compulsory. You had to greet elder people. And uh, say you didn't, even if you did greet them, he would the person you would would greet they would not know who you are because you lived in the city. You lived in the city, and um, they would ask you. Who are you? And you would, if the, the, the child would say their name. So it's like, I'm asking Arthur, who are you? And he said, well, I'm Arthur. That has absolutely no relevance whatsoever to me. Because I am not interested in your name. I am interested in the family you come from. So it, it, it would it would the correct answer would have been, oh, I am Arthur of and you say your father or your grandfather your grandfather's name. And that was the point where the person would then judge you through the knowledge and actions of your family, of your clan so to say. So if, if, your, if your family were bad people, it would not matter if you were good. You were also classed as bad because you belong to them. Um, and it was pretty similar in the house of Israel as well. Because even if you, if, if, if you go reading, um, they would always refer to God as the God of my father. Um, family was very important for them because um, they needed to be many. That's why they also had many children. And as, as the more male children that they had, the better it was for the clan. Because uh, manpower for work, because protection um, and supremacy over other families. Um, can we see, or can we can we see similarities, or can we learn something from uh, from uh, how? Israel would organize their family today. They, did they have any rules or laws regarding to the family? Yeah. You shall not spare the rod. Yeah. Yeah, but still, the, the man is the head of the family. It's the man is the head. Yeah. And the woman is the neck. Yeah. So she turns the head wherever she wants. Yeah. Yeah. Depends which type of uh, Hebrew you you you're talking about. Are you talking about Orthodox family, or are you talking about? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, today, today they are all over the place as well. But what I'm saying is, so if, for instance, um, the fifth commandment, yeah, what does the fifth commandment say? <coughs> Respect them. Exactly. But you said about Israel, yes? Yeah. Israel people, yes? Yeah. So we have to remember we are also put out from Egypt, what Moses was saying in that time, or God should say like his holy people. And the environment God says as well with Jesus Christ, uh, all all are Jewish which respect all the Ten Commandments. So all people which respect from all over the world. Which is the the Ten Commandments are Jews and these people of, uh, of God. And they are uh, put 
in all countries all over the world. For instance, uh, in Romania, the uh, second president after Ilescu was who to be a Jewish man. It's a rest, his name is a rest. Yeah. And they stay yeah. to but stay to the let politics out of the thing today. Um, let's stay with the family and let's let's discuss politics. Um, you know what I'm saying, what I say. <laughs> Yes, it's Brother Josh. Brother Josh, sorry, I didn't see you're hiding. Yeah. Um, if I'm getting your question well, uh, then I would say that one way or the other we can uh, bring up our family, let's just call the battle the Israelites. It's only chapter 6, verse 6 to 8. I think God told them to immediately teach their children. God is battle the Israelites. We immediately teach their children. Um, what to say <laughs> when they are working, they should teach them when they are in the house, they should teach them, uh, teach them. So, virtually everywhere that they will find themselves, uh, God invited them to uh, invite in them his words. So, in our time, too, the little chance that we get to be with our family, <laughs> our children, we can instill in them. What our belief and what God has uh, given us. Because when they go to school, they will not get that opportunity. Especially as Adventists, our faith we know is so unique and all of that. And so we have to keep the opportunity. God gives the Israelites, then do the same thing in our families to also teach them. It was a, 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 like a, a sworn duty they had to teach them. Yeah, exactly. Um, but can we say, because um, I was going to get to this as well, but you, you brought it in a little bit too early, but it's fine. So, um, can we discipline our children? What do you think of them? Okay. Right. This one is geographical. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. yes, it's very geographical. Uh, the customs and the laws um, pertaining to that area. We all know that in some areas um, there are ways of disciplining um, the, the child. Where I come from, when a child behaves, you can creep the child. <laughs> but I know that this place you can't do that. However, even with the laws of not doing that to a child, you can indirectly sell. Discipline your children without inflicting pain on them. It can be how you even talk to them. And if we, as I said it earlier, if you don't leave them to do whatever they want and you start to teach them at the early stage, I think uh, it will get to them and even the extent to which they will misbehave. If discipline is not instilled in them, if you start early to teach them, it will reduce. Unlike leaving them to do whatever they want. So we can still do it for care so that we don't get problems, depending on the example. On where you live, yes. Uh, we will get back to this. I want to get back to this, but I just want to uh, finish with the laws and rules <coughs> that God prescribes for, um, for the family. And we've got in Colossians 3, starting from verse 18, if you want to, to follow along. Uh, we've got the, 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 this uh, chapter is headed Instructions for Christian Households. And it says like this from verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. I am creating, I am getting into big trouble, I know. But it is not me that's saying it. It's the Bible that's saying it. And then... It also talks to the husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. How many times have, can you surprise yourself of just not necessarily beating with your wife, but just a, a harsh word is enough because a word you cannot take back. Um, children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. 
Fathers, do not embitter your children or they will come, become discouraged. Now this, what does this mean? Do not embitter your children or they, they will become discouraged. Don't have so many petty little things that they follow like little soldiers because then they will think they're sitting rules to have their way. They'll be discouraged. Yeah. Or constantly being unhappy. Oh, why did you have to do that? Oh, why did you have to? Oh, do you, don't you have anything else to wear? Why do you have to go now? Why this? Why that? Why this? Why that? Um. My wife always says I am too soft, or I was too soft with my children, but um, sometimes you, my son's 20, so uh, I know he's one of, your sons. One of my sons, <laughs> yeah, because um, we followed that as well, be fruitful and that, we followed that as well now at the, at the older age, yeah. And uh, the thing is, uh, you, I was. Why do Why do you have to do this? Why do you? Why not wear different shoes? And he said to me, "No, why are you constantly? No, don't, don't. It's better if you don't." But and I see myself doing this, embittering. I know he's old enough to take his own decisions. And I always, that's what, that's what I wanted to go when I said uh, that my wife is saying I'm too soft. I wanted to encourage them to, to take their own decisions. Even sometimes they are bad decisions. Um, <coughs> but still, parents have this um, tendency to go and criticize. Which the Bible clearly says, do not do that. Because they will become discouraged. And then you say, well, are you not coming to church? And they say, you what? Where? Why? Because the elder is picking on me. So extend this to the greater family of our church. Oh, you, how can you wear that at church? How can you not wear a tie when you... And it goes on to uh, slaves obey your earthly masters and so on, but today uh, obviously we don't have no more slaves. Um, <coughs> whatever you do, work with it, work at it with all your heart as, work, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. So that is one of the um, one of the larger instructions I found uh, for the Christian home, and then the next one is one Corinthians. Um, let me just before I say it. Yeah, so one Corinthians chapter seven from verse three. And it says, the husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife, and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but yields it to her husband. It, that is bad. Huh? <laughs> In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. So what are we talking here about? The way how you treat your no. your body, you to treat your wife. Well. No, no, no. We are talking about your to fulfill your marital duties. Yeah, and that one as well. Yeah. Just that one. <laughs> yeah, we are talking about this. <coughs> so um, it is. It continues, do not deprive each other, except perhaps by mutual consent, and for a time. There is a lot going on in today's world, 
with people splitting up and uh, so on. Um, and our pastors, they are not talking about this. They are not talking about family. They are not talking about the duties that a wife has to the husband and the more duty that a, a husband has to his wife and so on. Yeah. Do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time so that you might devote yourself to prayer. Then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Because Satan today is targeting mainly the family. Why? I said to you from the very beginning, we represent God. This is represent God. God. Yeah, and well, and as well, God has been issued two things <coughs> in heaven. It was a marriage and supper. Right? And this family is why, and supper. And this is why today we see a lot of people not worshiping in supper, worshiping every other day. But in, in the Sabbath are just a very fraction of people who are worshipping people, which is Jewish and Seventh Adventist and just some other small denomination which are pleased to do. And marriage, and today what we look into the marriage are disasters, are people who married five, six times. You know, we're talking about okay, your first marriage didn't work well, we go to the second one. You see marriage after marriage and after marriage. But there are rules for that as well. Yes. yes. God says, taught, tells you what to do. It's and not as, like random. And as well, we'll see about transformation of men becoming the womanized. And same, Wait, I get there and well. same thing from the from the woman to be menized. Sometimes I see, I, I saw a group of women who <coughs> are What kind of woman? The fragile woman would be looking like when you look into my wife when she was uh, right. She was fragile, yeah. She was, and how I, how you can marry a young girl with a muscle like that and wait and, and do a wedding dress, yeah. And same thing with a, with a man who is like this and like that. How is it? This is what devil is is perverted, perverted the marriages. I will, I will say to you. Um, or, or other, abundant others, which is happening. So the devil um, uh, targets the family because um, uh, one of the main reasons, I believe, is because the family is the developing ground for the next generation. So demasculinization of the man, that is one. Girl power. The woman can do the same thing the man can do. No, the woman can do more than the man can do, but not in the physical way. There is, I think there is a factor as well of, uh, in general, the ratio of the men and women. There's a tendency maybe that you know, leads to that, uh, how we say, toxic. Um, the uh, the mainstream idea today about family is, and I have seen it because we work in people's houses, um, uh, you can see it, how roles are reversed. There is a lot of focus today on the career woman. The woman has to go out and make a career and work and bring the money home and everything. And the man is sitting at home, feeding the children, uh, washing the clothes. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with helping your wife. Yeah, but man was not made for this because the the love and the attention and the education that a woman can give to a child up to seven years. Yeah, through the first seven years, cannot be compared with what a man can do. We are different. Uh, 
Man sits at home, washes clothes, does uh, the cooking and whatever. Uh, I cook on a, on a Sunday when I'm at home. I like to cook. There's no problem with that. But uh, sitting at home and doing all this long term leads, and I am saying this with, uh, I am saying this because I've seen it. Alcoholism, drug attack, uh, uh, addiction. Why? Because the man is supposed to have a purpose to go out and feed the family, provide for the family, and that is how he's being fulfilled by doing these things. The role of the parents is, um, is attacked as well. Um, I recently heard this week, uh, I heard, um, there are certain people that go to the schools unannounced and they are saying, oh, it's perfectly fine to have two daddies and it's perfectly fine to have two mummies. There's nothing wrong with that. And then the children come home and say, oh, look, today this uh, person came and said, oh, it's fine. And then the parents said, oh, we never knew that they were going to go and tell this to the children. So the destruction of the family really starts with the children. And uh, now we get to what George um, uh, said, well, uh, we were talking about uh, discipline. Uh, again, cases I have seen, oh, if you touch me, I'm going to report you to child support. 9 year old child telling her father if you touch me i am calling child support where do they know all this from and then there's the other thing where um um the teenagers and so on um, because now uh, it's very, very actual and everywhere in the news, war is coming, conscription. So now I am thinking to myself, I did uh, my national service, I was in the army, I know what it, what it takes to be part of the army. Um, how? Will they be able to defend their country if they don't know whether they're a boy or a girl? Whether today I'm painting my hair green or blue? The whole purpose of, of this um, of the, these, these actions by certain people onto our teenager are to just to take them away from morality. And that is how the family simply breaks up and it's gone. Yeah, today in the society, the terms being given married. It's not anymore so, the, so, the, so important. The most, the most uh, alarming thing, though, is that we know these things. Yeah, we know these things. But still, there are voices in our church. Oh, we can't. No, we must accept them like they are. Oh, we must accept them. We must accept them, but then what does what does uh, what does God say about this? 
<coughs> yeah, the thing is, every man can needs, needs to be accepted uh, how it is. But we should not be agreed for how what we do. Arthur, Leviticus 20, verse 13. If a man has sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. They are be to put to death, and their blood will be on their own heads. I am not saying. But there are voices in our church, oh, we must accept them. Yeah, accept them as a person, but not as a, what we're doing. Because you don't, I don't know what, what everyone does in their private lives. If you are transitioning from a man to be a woman, what are you doing? Yeah, this is wrong. This is wrong. You need to tell, you need to tell people what is wrong and what is wrong. And this is what, at the moment, is being told to our children to our teenagers, not so much to our teenagers, because they already uh, can determine uh, what is right or wrong, but to the little children. And it is being said into their head, like, oh, it's normal, it's just normal. And they will grow up with this being normal. And you are sitting at home, you are trying to be a Christian family, and you are fighting the fight against face to face against the influence of the devil and it is alarming so what can we do huh? I'm joking. <laughs> according to what you said to me to children but uh, no there are rules and there are laws of how a family should function in the bible the only thing we need to do is open the Bible. Yeah, Re regarding it, if, if, you want, if, you, if you open this subject, it's quite a delicate subject about homosexuality. It is, and I am open in yeah. it because no one else does. Yeah. Um, the thing is, I spoke with somebody about two weeks ago about this thing. That how we treat our colleges, how we treat doctors with this, this is how we should treat homosexuality because it's a mental. Is a mental problem. To get to that point, that in your mind has been treated. And we have people with a mental disease, which is a lot of other diseases, yeah? Why the society doesn't accept that? Why are they trying to implement myself, I'm wrong, and they are good? But they are having a mental problem, emotional problem, a mental problem, which a specialist needs to consult them and bring them back which is induced this mental problem that you are so on about and I, I, do I think that you are trying to excuse the whole thing or to make it seem a bit more acceptable? Who? You. Me? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. So this mental state that you're on about is caused by a broken up family. Mom and dad, they are, look, um, Maxine's grandchildren. Yeah. That is caused by by uh, by broken up families, and it is caused by external factors who come and normalize it. And a child's brain is like a sponge. The more you put into it, the more it will absorb. And if you put the thing in it that you want, it will be normalized. Yes. And the children won't think anything about it. This is why I said to you, the society today, they don't treat this thing seriously. They, just, they don't, they and, just it is, agree with that. and it is a fight that we have to put up with, even though we will be classed as old-fashioned, as um, conservative, as... Um, um, how do I... Um, like obsessed with our moral uh, moral standards, yeah. But it is a thing that I encourage everyone who has uh, children to stand up to and to uh, not necessarily like uh, I read earlier. They have to be 
sorted. Um, but just to say, we do not see it like that. You, if if you really believe it, God will give you the courage to say no. We do not see things this way. Yeah, and uh, another thing is, I said to you, like, I'm concentrated as a mental problem, which which society needs to find a solution how to treat. But instead of that, in case in some countries who already agree to take children and give it to this family to be grown. And, and how you can give to a family which is two, two men or two women to be grown? It is a very big fight, man. Yeah. It is a very big fight. And for example, oh, if they taking the children were properly with mom or dad trying to discipline the child in the way, the traditional way, uh, have, they been, have they been disciplined as well? And take it and give it to a to a gay family. Uh, is is very weird how the society starting going to it. And today it looks like a, a sin because this is a sin. It's more prioritized. Prioritized than a discipline. Exactly. Where you try to bring a child into a correct path. Okay, it's very late now. Um, so. Um, I'm going to stop here, but before stopping, I just want to read you uh, a song, which just to lift up the spirits a little bit, because uh, <laughs> I've um, maybe it was too too much. So what I'm uh, what I'm reading is Psalm 128 from verse one. Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to Him. You will eat the fruit of your labor, blessings and prosperity will be yours. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Yes, this will be the blessing for the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. Peace be on Israel. Amen. Amen. Brother George, would you like to share um, a testimony with us? Uh, Can I come up? <laughs> come up. Yes, please. <laughs> My testimony is going to be very brief and then if possible you join me sing oh, if time we still have time. we have time yeah. <laughs> and since it's all about home family family home basically my tree is going to be on that um, I married four years ago May will be the fifth month uh, fifth year this May then will be in a fifth year and God has been so good to us Unfortunately, my wife is not around to come to church today. That's why I came alone. Um, we didn't have an abrupt um, wedding. We had to take a bit of time. Fortunately, we were not living together when we, we decided to marry. It, it took about um, a year to finish our preparation. Um, if it were UK, I would say maybe I was in London. And then she was in Lancaster, a bit far, about five hours drive. <coughs> so what we did was that uh, where I come from, we, we, we married twice. <laughs> it, it's not necessary, but that is what is going on. Uh, if it were now, I wouldn't have done it anyway. I say we married twice because you will have to uh, do what we call traditional marriage. The oh, traditional yeah. marriage, um, most of the time, Adventists, we do ours on Friday. That is the tradition or local, let me say, the local way of marrying. Mm -hmm. And then the second one, most of the time, we do it on Sunday. That would be <coughs> the wedding. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's why I said we, we, we marry twice. 
we do that on Friday and do the wedding at church on Sunday. So the preparation for those two occasions, it took about one year. I had finished uh, my tertiary education and was having my national service. So uh, we started buying the things uh, bit by bit till everything was um, completed and then we had it. And God has been so good to us. We have one child, God has protected us. We have one child, one boy. And though there are, as we all know, in every marriage there are challenges, but it has not gotten to a point where we have regretted that God put us together. No, God has been good. He has helped us to manage our marriage. And then um, last year we moved here. Uh, we've had a nice time too. And um, God has done a lot. In fact, He has done a lot. So, to sum everything, I would like us to, all of us, to sing Him 100 Great is Thy Faithfulness and what has been good to us. If we can do maybe the first and last stanzas, then that will be good. Amen. 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 Amen.